<clears throat> hey everyone, I just wanted to make a short video um, covering one of the examples uh, that's in the notes, <clears throat> sort of about talking about um, a formula for pi. Um, so this is example 2.7 in the notes, uh, and it has our, our algorithm 2.3 is a formula there. I've got a slightly edited version of that that I'm going to share with you. Um, so <clears throat> in another example, we did an approximation to E. So in this example, we're going to do an approximation to pi. Um, so I have in my little uh, <clears throat> in my little bag of tricks here. I have this uh, file which I'll share on my uni, but also I'll share this particular uh, octave bucket that you can edit. Um, <clears throat> so the same deal. We have a bunch of uh, commented uh, code. So we've got the number of uh, partial the sub part. Want to work, work up to the partial sum. Uh, S60 here. Um, just to start with, um, this is a formula for the uh, nth term in the in the infinite series for pi. I'm going to have a look at that in a little bit more detail. This is kind of a bit mysterious for now. Um, <clears throat> but then we basically we're going to create a vector where each entry in the vector, so this is S, uh, is going to be the partial sum for for that uh, for that um that index it starts at one so you sort of s1 is the partial sum s0 and so on so it's off by one but we don't particularly care um, at the moment um, <clears throat> so and then i've made a vector of errors which will uh, the difference between my partial sum and a machine uh, machine stored value for pi which is very accurate so you might wonder how accurate uh, is that so i'm actually just going to change the format to format long to get more decimal places and then I'll type in pi, 3.14159265355, right? So this is, you know, you know, I think I've memorized th that many digits. Um, and so that's correct. Um, we're going to see, oh, maybe there's more digits hiding behind here, but we'll see. Um, and we have a loop where we calculate the, the cumulative partial sums and the error at each point. And then we'll plot the error and then we'll plot the output value. So, all right, let's run this. Okay, so the error <coughs> is one, well, that's a minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus two. Maybe that's a little bit weird. Let's change the format back to short. Uh, let's run that again. Okay. So the error is about 0 0.01. Uh, so that's not really great. That means we've only got one correct decimal place. I can actually type in what is my what is my partial sum s end, right? the last entry in the vector s, 3.12, right? So we didn't even get 3.14, right? And it doesn't even round to the correct value. So 3.1 is our estimate with 60 terms. We actually crank this up. Let me crank this up to 100 terms. I think, golly, it's going to be a lot more accurate. Uh, and let's try it partial sum s end 3.13. Oh man, right, we're really struggling here to get any level of accuracy. And you look at the these blue dots here, calculate the, the error as we add more and more terms, and then even by the towards the end at 100 terms, they're still visually oscillating. So, if this was sort of this line was a lot of dots was flat as a tack, we'd kind of be a bit more confident that the error was really tiny and and. You know, it's going to shrink over time, but if it's really, really tiny, close to zero, and we're not seeing it budge, then we think, okay, maybe our approximation is pretty accurate. So this is not this is not great. Um, <clears throat> so, all right, but it's it's a you know you can use this. You can, if you crank the, you know, it's certainly not something you want to do by hand. Maybe we had a thousand terms. Oh, okay. So, all right, this, this graph here is pretty flat. The, uh, the, the error here is 0 0.001. So what's S end, the very last partial sum, 3.1406. All right, so if we round, this is correct to three decimal places, but 115, one, actually, no, it's not, right? Rounded, it's 3.142. Um, so we've got two decimal places, but we need a thousand terms here. That's not cool. All right, so where did this series come from? That's actually a um, formula due to uh, jointly and independently to Leibniz uh, and to an Indian mathematician called Madhava from about 300 years earlier. Um, 
right? So what you saw was a MATLAB code, but this here is the actual, the actual formula. So in the code, it was pi equals four times this left-hand side here. We get this alternating sum of the reciprocals of the odd numbers. Um, so there's something interesting down here is we can talk about uh, some evaluated to high precision with a small number of terms. Well, okay, so <clears throat> I'll show you how you get to this formula um, and how it sort of links up with uh, the, um, the MATLAB one. So I'm just gonna switch to the iPad. So now uh, this Madhava Leibniz series, <clears throat> so officially it's pi on four is the infinite sum from n equals zero to infinity of minus one to the n over two n plus one. Or rather pi equals infinite sum four times minus one to the n over two n plus one where the sum goes from zero up to infinity. <clears throat> So what does this look like? It's like four times uh, one minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh. I'm gonna write a few more out. Plus uh, one ninth minus one eleventh and so on. All right, so the thing that you can do to make it slightly more accurate, because this alternating series, the error estimates in alternating series are not great. Actually, group the terms pairwise like this. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to reorder the terms because that does weird things to infinite sums. What we're just going to do is group them up. So now I'm going to add up four times. Well, this this term here, one minus a third, and then one fifth minus one seventh. I can get a general formula for each of these. So this is actually equal to um, infinite sum from n equals zero up to infinity or four times uh, it's one over four n plus one minus one over four n plus three. It's making a little fence here. <clears throat> All right, and then we can rearrange this to be infinite sum n equals zero up to infinity of four uh, over, actually, scrub that, like this, it's going to be four over, uh, four times that was actually two, so this is an actually an eight, it's four n plus one, four n plus three. Okay, yep, that's better. Okay, so now now this this uh, this series here, this is not alternating. Um, so this actually uh, does slightly better properties. So let's go back to Octave and see if we can actually do uh, do this one. So. Just jump back here. Okay, so I'm going to edit slightly on the fly here. But we don't need a thousand terms. Let's pull that back down to a hundred. It's going to make a new one. B. So it's going to be eight times. Well, eight divided by. And then I had a product of two things on the bottom, which was four n plus one and four n plus three. All right, so it's eight times four n plus one, four n plus three, all right. <clears throat> now let's make t uh, one equal b of zero. So I'm just re replicating everything here. Error b one equals t of one minus Pi, and now I'm going to copy everything here. Also calculate it at the same time. So t 
j uh, tj minus one bj uh, minus one and then error b s as becomes a t all right <coughs> let's put a stack of lines down the bottom to pad this out and now let's just plot error b and error b ends well let's save that let's see how we go i haven't tried this tested this out let's just do it oh okay so this is a whole lot nicer <clears throat> so remember with even a hundred decimal a uh, hundred terms for the original series our accuracy was one decimal place so what if we type out t end All right, this is our last entry 3.1366 well, it's marginally better um all right but if i crank this up to say a thousand you see here the errors are just um flattening out sort of monotonically here say s sorry t end 3.1411 so let me what it, when i did uh This is when I did a thousand terms, I got 3.1406. Oh, you got 3.1411. So it's slightly better. I mean, okay, it's it's really just sort of maybe calculating out um, sort of the A, the A one, sort of twice as far. But you can see that, you know, uh, then there are some various tricks you can do computationally to, to improve this, but we're not really going to cover those in this course. But there are, there are interesting things you can do. So anyway, I hope this has been interesting and does an illustration of um, how one can investigate this uh, interesting series.